Warning, this game contains content might not be suitable for most audiences. Viewer's discretion is advised. Hello everyone and welcome to Up All Night. This is a game where you go up to the woods for a weekend getaway, but everything goes wrong. This is also another game that's being featured on this year's Queer Halloween Stories Bundle, where you can get over a hundred amazing games, books, and audio dramas for the low, low price of $60. So if you guys do want to get this game alongside with like all these amazing content from amazing indie creators out there i'd highly suggest you guys to get it yourselves i completely forgot i was supposed to get myself a copy of this i'll be getting it like after this so yeah uh don't worry about that but anyway let's get right into it shall we it was a long drive but we made it you feeling okay sweetie i told you i'm fine i just want to lie down you go do whatever my mom looked out the cabin window and went quiet. She looks disappointed. She was talking nonstop about that mountain village the whole drive up. Look, why don't you go back to that town and look around? I'll unpack and watch a movie or something. She hesitated and a worried expression crossed her face. Why does she have to keep looking at me like that? It's been four months. I know, you haven't been alone since. Stop being like that! I told you, I'm fine. Just go see the town. Seems like your kind of thing. But Nick, I'm fine. I just... I just want to be alone. Why does she have to be like that? I'm tired of all the pity. She hesitated, then sighed, the worry shifting to resignation. If you're sure. We're only here for a week. Go have a good time. After we unloaded our luggage, I ushered her out the door. She waved at me before driving back down the road. Good. Now I can finally be alone. Like I wanted. I put my stuff away and spent a few hours playing games on my phone. No cell service though. This sucks. Not like there's anyone I want to call anyway. It was, starting, it was starting to get late and my mom still hasn't come back. She called a few hours ago on the cabin phone. Just had to tell me all about the crummy little stores in town. Probably got distracted with all the shopping. Huh. It's getting pretty loud out there. Yeah, I pulled the curtains aside. A snowstorm. Ugh. Yeah, I hope she wasn't driving back with this hit. Who's at the phone? Ring, ring. The phone? I picked up the receiver. Nick, I... I'm sorry. She sounds upset. Is something... What's wrong? Are you hurt? What? No, I, I was still in town looking around when this huge snowstorm hit. There's an officer here saying the roads are closed. Probably until at least tomorrow night. Yeah, I'm going to have to stay over at a motel tonight. Pretty silly that I left my luggage at a cabin, huh? Yeah. She left, but there was definitely a panicked edge to it. Jeez, you made it sound like you were dying when you called. Look, just get some rest. I'll see you in the morning. My heart was pounding up near the back of my throat. At least she isn't hurt. I can deal with sleeping alone for the night. Yeah, I just wish she didn't worry so much. All I could think of was her rushing into a hospital room four months ago. I never wanted to see her like that again. Really, I'll be fine. Will you really be okay? For a whole night? I told you already, I can handle it. I'm 18, I've graduated. I'm not a little kid or anything. Just, just don't drive up until the road is safe. My voice cracked a little. Ah, oh, darn. I have to keep it together. If she does something stupid, gets hurt rushing back because of me. Okay, we'll wait until it's safe. Yeah, I'm so sorry, honey. You're stuck out there alone after I talked to you into coming up here. Never should take you in such a long drive. I slammed my fist down on the table right next to the phone. Nick? S sorry, I, I just tripped over a chair. Wasn't paying attention. Okay, just remember, the medication's in the suitcase if you need. The line went dead. Mom? You there? Oh no. Great, she probably thinks I hung up on her. I tried to call back. Nothing. Old dial tone, the static, nothing. Well, isn't this going to be a great trip? The next few hours passed more fitfully than the first few had. Why did she have to pick such a terrible cabin? The phone doesn't even work now, and the way it just went dead. 
I couldn't call for help that day either. My cell phone was laying on the rocky ground in shattered pieces, reduced to a useless hunk of plastic and glass. I tried to use it anyway, but the screen wouldn't even turn on. Calm down. It's just a storm that knocked a pole down or something. Yeah, I should just be glad the power is on. Anyway, this isn't anything like that time. Knock, knock! The hell? The door? If she did something stupid like drive back before the road was safe. Yeah, I got up to answer it. I threw the door open, expecting to see my mom's shocked face. Yeah, it wasn't her. Hello, handsome! Some guy around my age was standing there. His fist raised up in front of my face like he was about to knock again. <laughs> can, 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 can he just continue, please? Like, it'd be so funny if he just, like, knocked on my goddamn face. Please! His eyes went a little wide and he lowered his arm to the side. No! Come on! Oh, man. This is super awkward. Apologies if I woke you. I was just checking up on all the guests. You would be? Oh, I'm... Nick, uh, who are you? He extended his hand out towards me. Apologies again. I asked your name and I didn't give mine. I'm Felix. The corners of his lips twitched and he tilted his head to the side, a piece of dark hair falling over his left eye. My father owns the cabins out here, but he's out of town right now. He wanted me to make sure everyone's all right, what with the bears and in the garbage last night and the storm tonight. His hand was still extended out towards me. I will shake his hand. Why would I not shake his hand? Yeah, I reached out and shook his hand. His grip was firm and his fingers cold. I wonder why he's come by so late. He must be pretty cold. He doesn't have a jacket. Do you want to come in and warm up? It's pretty cold out there. You don't mind? I did forget my jacket. Don't know what I was thinking, really. Is there anything you need to make you stay more comfortable? Actually, yeah, the phone went out earlier. Do you want me to take a look? He gestured to the phone on the nightstand. My mom's been stuck in town. She's probably been trying to call. Yeah, come in and take a look. Maybe you can fix it. I moved out of the way so he could come in. He smiled at me as he stepped inside and went over to the phone. I fiddled with my cell phone, eyeing the empty reception boss. Well, at least I downloaded a couple of offline games so I have something to do to pass the time. I wish there was a reception up here. It's weird having to use one of these old phones. The price of isolation, I suppose. Well, the phone looks fine. There must be something wrong with the line. It'll probably be out until someone can come up here and do repairs. Well, so much for that. I guess I couldn't call her back then. Huh, did you come here with your girlfriend? Ugh, no! Definitely not! It's my mom. She got stuck out in town because of the storm. No girlfriend that- Hey, that- I, 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 Are you coming on to me, Felix? Uh, Felix smiled again and raised an eyebrow. We locked eyes and there was a strange intensity in his gaze. What's with this guy? Why is he asking me something like that? No, I don't- I tried to push Bree's face out of my thoughts and a wave of nausea washed over me. No, I never actually asked her out. She was never my girlfriend. Brake shrieked, then went silent. As the wheels lost traction and left the road, we were tumbling down the embankment, everything spinning in slow motion. Bree was there, somewhere. The back? Tyler was up front. I think Bree might have been screaming, but the blood was pounding so loudly in my ears. Wrong? Everything is wrong. Everything's been wrong since... I felt an arm slip around my waist. Bree? No, she was in the back seat. Wait, around my waist! There were hands on my shoulders now, shaking me back and forth. I could hear someone calling from a distance. Nick, what's wrong? My eyes slid back into focus, and I found myself standing on the couch. Oh no, I had a flashback. Thought I was over those. I was covered in cold sweat, and bowel was rising in the back of my throat. My leg was throbbing, and my neck ached. Ah, don't think about it. I'm fine. I'm going to be fine. Nothing. Just, uh, just tired. Long drive, you know. Must have, been, must have fallen asleep on my feet or something. I rubbed in my leg and winced before fading a yawn. Yes, yes. Anyone will be tired after a drive like that. 
I'll call in a technician once the road is cleared. Yeah, I stood up, and almost immediately, the dizziness hit again. Felix opened the front door. Please leave. I think I might pass out, or maybe have another one of those things. I don't need this guy to watch that again. Sucks you couldn't fix it, but thanks for trying. Felix turned towards me and gave a shallow bow, finishing it off with a twirl of his hand. His eyes met mine again. It really feels like he's looking into the back of my skull. I shivered, the cold wind blowing over me from the front door. It feels good to meet you, Nick. It's lonely up here. Perhaps we can spend more time together once you've settled in. There's something interesting about you. Without waiting for my reply, he slipped out into the moonlit night. In the distance, the thunder of the storm still echoed. It's pretty late now. Maybe I should just watch TV on this old set. There's even a tape player built into it. Who the hell has videotapes anymore? These cabins need some serious upgrades. At least there's still power. When I turned on the TV, some old horror movie was playing. There was a woman screaming, covered in blood as she ran through a dark tunnel. Something was creeping behind her, claws dragging along a stone cavern as it tracked her down. Yeah, no thanks. I changed the channel to some late night infomercial for some weird fancy blander. Perfect. I couldn't stay awake even if I tried with this boring thing on. I fell asleep to that. The sounds of chopping and blending on the small set more comforting than the thoughts that would have come floating up in that awful silence. The dreams came anyway. <laughs> His face! Oh no! I need to get out of here. I was rolling, my body snapping from side to side as the car crunched down the embankment. Why is this always the start of the dream? It wasn't the start of that night. I could hear the brakes squeal when I slammed them down. Then their scream went silent when the tires lost the road. Yeah, it's what happened first, except I'm still rolling right now. That's not right. Their eyes were on me, gazes warming up on my spine. Bree is behind me. Tyler's in the front passenger seat. Don't look. Don't look. Instead, I stared fixedly at the bloody crimson rivelets dripping down the dash. There were strips of flesh and torn hair, pinched in the starburst cracked in the windshield where Tyler's head had hit. Why did you do it? I, I didn't mean to. Why weren't you looking? I'm sorry. Look at me. No. I... I can't... Why didn't you die? This guy has a lot of trauma. And a lot of guilt. I woke up shuddering and coated in chilly sweat that rolled down my forehead and into my eyes. A groan escaped my lips and I pressed my palms into my closed eyes until I saw stars. I wish I could stop those dreams. At least I won't be alone again tonight. It was light outside now, and the TV was still on. The morning news was playing. Quite a storm we had last night. The pass up to Aspen Lodge had been closed until the city can plow it. Hope you vacationers have a cozy fire and a book, because it's going to be at least another night before it clears. I groaned again. That was not the sort of news I wanted to hear. Not at all. Never mind then. Guess it's another day alone. No reason to wait around here. Might as well go out to get some air. Maybe I'll run into that guy. What was his name? Felix? Maybe I'll get lucky and get mauled by a bear. I wouldn't have any more nightmares then. Eh. I opened the door to leave and nearly walked into Felix who was standing just outside. D what the? It was snowing lightly. The sky still overcast from light last night's storm. He sighed and rubbed at the bridge of his nose as if he had a headache. I wanted to apologize for last night. I can be a little, oh, I don't know, intense. And here I am, surprising you again. I've made a bad impression, haven't I? There was a light dusting of snow on his shoulders, and there were slight bags under his eyes that made him look tired. He was holding a small basket at his side, the contents wrapped in blue checkered cloth. It looks like he didn't get any sleep last night. Was he out here looking for that bear? It's fine, don't worry about it. 
Most of the people who come up here are either retired or parents with young kids. Needless to say, they aren't great for conversations that hold my interest. I may have gotten a bit carried away with my introduction. It was simply refreshing to meet someone like you. I told you, it's fine. I mean, I'm not exactly normal myself. Yes, true. You seem like someone who understands isolation. Uh, yeah, I guess. I'm only here for a couple of days. It isn't like I'm gonna be here forever. Well, of course. I'm no fool, Nick. I was thinking I should come over tonight. I would like to get to know you better. I would regret it if our time was defined by one single strange meeting. Uh, yeah, come over. Sure, I guess. Oh, good. I was worried I'd put you off too much. Here, as an apology. He handed me the basket he was holding. I unfolded the cloth covering the contents. Inside were a couple of bottles of sparkling water, a bunch of individually wrapped toffees, and a package of off-brand peach rings. The, uh... Guest shop is a little low on selections for this sort of thing, but it's just a little something to apologize about the phone. See you tonight then? Uh, yeah, I'll see you tonight then. He's kind of weird, but I guess it's better than being stuck alone for another night. I'll see you then. Maybe I'll bring a movie? Unless you have a suggestion. No, oh, no, no, like, um, you know, like, um, well, we don't have Netflix up here, but, you know, like, um, VHS and chill, sure. Well, I'm kind of stuck up here, so... Eh, no suggestions. Unless you have a way to get wireless internet I don't know about. No, unfortunately, it's rather expensive. The phone lines took quite a while to get hooked up. And, well, you know how reliable those are. Yeah, I guess that's too much to ask for. Anyway, I guess I'll see you tonight. I'm sure whatever you end up bringing will be better than infomercials and phone games. Oh, well... I may end up disappointing you. I don't have many... things like that. Don't you live up here? The heck do you do? Oh, mostly working. I read at times. I also go for walks fairly often. I mean, with a lovely landscape like this, how could I resist? Anyway, see you tonight. Have fun exploring. With a wave, he turned to leave. I guess I really would be alone for the day, unless... Hey, uh... You wouldn't want to come with me, would you? Felix glanced back and seemed to consider my offer. For a moment, he looked like he was about to agree before shaking his head regretfully. No, no, I have too much to do. I do look forward to hearing about your day, though. Perhaps you can provide some suggestions for freshening this place up. Maybe we can explore more tonight. I don't know about going out at night. What with the bears and all? A small smile creased his lips and it made me realize just how tired he looked. My current project, actually. I need to preserve the safety of my guest. He continued on his way and left me standing at the door, holding the strange gift basket he'd given me. I trudged around the side of the house, the bright white snow making me squint. There was a trail nearby with a frozen pond about three miles away that my mom had wanted to visit. I guess I could go check it out and let her know if it's worth her time. The air was strangely still after the harsh winds from the night before. It made everything feel less real. The trees are actually pretty beautiful out here. The bark is almost as white as the snow. It kind of looks like some sort of fantasy show or something. Then I sighed. A blossom of red among the endless white. The smear was so crimson bright that it gleamed like a beacon. I couldn't look away. What is it? A person? After I got closer, I could see three hooves poking out of the layer of fresh snow. A deer, maybe. Why the hell did I think that was a person? Maybe there really is a bear around here. Ugh, gross! What the hell is that? A uh, ma'am? What the? The words cut through the silence and made me jump. A girl? She was staring at the deer corpse, her expression somewhere caught between disgust and fascination. You scared me! I didn't hear you come up! What are you doing out here? The girl gave me an annoyed look. Uh, going for a walk? Looks like you weren't doing the same thing, or were you out looking for dead stuff? That'd be pretty weird. Uh, I will respond, why would I be rude? What the- No, I was not trying to find a dead deer! Damn it, my face is getting red. Gotta keep it cool- <laughs> Isn't Nick down bad? 
Some guy last night told me that there was a bear around, so I thought I'd take a look. What's your name, anyway? Ah, uh, my name's Grayson. And man, this sounds like something fun. Real life bear, huh? He ate that critter pretty damn good, too, didn't he? Uh, yeah, I guess. If ripping something's gut open is, uh, good. I'm Nick, by the way. I cleared my throat. So, uh, you on vacation out here, too? Yeah, I guess you could say that. If being stuck out in the middle of n nothing for three years counts as vacation. You want to look at the deer now? Sure, might as well. Nothing else to do up here, right? I found myself grinning, which was weird since I was standing over a deer corpse. You're right about that. What do you want to look at first? Uh, look at the head. His neck looked like it had been crushed between a set of powerful jaws. Ugh. Still can't believe you guys drove all the way out here to pick me up. Don't look at me. He's the one that wanted to get you. Well, I mean, I invited you to the party, so I figured, you know. Are you blushing? Shut up. <laughs> You're super red, man. They're both laughing, and I felt my cheeks burning. Oh, Nick. I told you to shut up. No, it's the road. Nah! A shadow had darted out from the side of the road. Slender hoof legs stood frozen in surprise. Shocked eyes glowing green in the glare of the headlights. I swerved. The eyes of the doe in front of me weren't gleaming with any light at all. They were gray and lifeless. The deer's mouth was hanging open slightly and its tongue had lolled out. It must have been panty on the ground as it died. Hey buddy, you okay? Nick? Grayson waved her hand in front of my face, trying to snap me out of what must have been a very obvious daze. Sorry, I was thinking about something. Not a problem, don't worry about it. Really freaky how something crushed its neck, huh? Some guy said it was a bear? Yeah, some guy came by last night and said something about a bear getting into the garbage. I guess it got into more than that. Yeah, I gestured grimly at the dead deer. You're in the cabins? Yeah, it's just over there. I pointed back towards the tip of the cabin roof, still visible in the distance. Grace nodded and peered over at the deer, her eyebrows furrowed in thought. Ah, brush away the snow. Yeah, I could see even more red under the lighter coating of the snow that covered the deer's torso. It must have been killed after the heaviest part of the storm had passed, or it would have been more buried. I brushed the snow away. There was a deep frozen pool of blood under the deer's exposed stomach. Viscera and organs trailed out into a congealed pool. The blood had overflowed into a second, more shallow indentation in the ground. Ugh, looks like a big paw print frozen in blood. Aren't bear paws pretty wide? These look more like giant dog print. Nah, they're way too big to be a dog. Gotta be a bear. Poor thing. I wonder if it was still alive when its guts were ripped out. Well, don't you just like the sound of... Don't you just sound like the life of the party? Yeah, I don't go to parties anymore. She rolled her eyes, hands fake placed firmly on her hips. Way to be a downer. I ignored her and bent down again to look at the body. Eh, don't look anymore. I know she's curious, but this is making me feel sick. Hey, I think I've had enough of this. Why don't we do something else? Sure, why not? What you want to do? Uh, what should we do? Maybe I should invite her back to my cabin. Ah, wait, that's super weird. I just freaking met her. <laughs> Grayson wandered off while I was thinking, then perked up and called back to me. Oh, look, more prints. Want to follow him and see what else the bear got up to? Uh, not really. What if there's another dead animal? I don't know if. She went up to me and grabbed my hand, pulling me towards the track she found. Come on, it'll be fun. I've been damn bored for I don't know how long. I mean, you're the first random man in forever. Nah, uh, I'm definitely going for her. Why would I pull away? I'm going. Yeah, it's been a while since I made a friend too. She grinned. So, since we're friends at all, what are you doing up here anyway? Uh, my mom made me come out here for a vacation. Guess she thought it'd take my mind off things. It work? Not unless constantly remembering the worst night of my life was the goal. Nah, not exactly. What about you? We trudged after the animal tracks while we talked, our breath misting in the chill air. Been up here for near on three years now. I actually kinda hate it. 
been trying to get my dad to let me move in with my mom in the city. She looked over at me. Your parents together? Yeah, they're just, I don't know, normal? My mom is kind of pushy, like she thought dragging me out here would change me somehow or something. Grayson nodded at me as if she understood perfectly. Yeah, being up here doesn't fix nothing. At least you're just visiting. My dad keeps me up here like some prisoner. You don't get to go into town or anything. She waved her hands dismissively. Yeah, I mean, sure, I can go to town and junk, but hanging out at the hardware store ain't exactly a party. Ain't got a school up here neither, so I just did the homeschool and then uh, graduated last June. The computer don't always connect to the internet neither, and it still uses the phone line when it does. Really sucks, you know? My dad just keeps going on and on about how it's good for me to be up here. He doesn't want me to move out or nothing neither. I'm an adult! I ain't a kid no more, but he don't even want to let me try to go it alone. You sound pretty mad at him. She kicked at the snow in frustration. Eh, yeah, he means okay, it's just... He just don't get it. He wouldn't even listen to me last night. All I wanted was to give living out in the city with my mom a goat, but they get along so bad now, he wouldn't even let me call. Yeah, I mean, parents can be kind of stupid sometimes, but they usually... Creek? What's that? Creek? It's coming from over there. There was a bend in the trail, the source of the sound obscured by trees. I could see the paw prints going off into the brush in the same direction. Creek. We... We don't have to go over there. But Grayson was already ahead of me. I saw her clear the bend and freeze, staring off at something I couldn't see yet. She raised her hand up to her mouth, eyes wide and head shaking back and forth. Creek. I don't want to know what this is. I was walking closer anyway. I had to see what she was seeing. I turned the corner. A nude corpse was hanging from a tree, a rope tight around its neck. There was a sack over his head, bound tightly into place with the rope that had hung him. His intestines were hanging out of his sliced open stomach, dangling almost to the ground. One of his legs was completely missing. This can't be real. This... I just can't! Oh my gosh, Nick! I don't think a bear did that. She was shivering. It was obvious it wasn't from the cold. We should go tell... I don't know, someone? Who? No, the road's been closed and all the phones are out. We didn't come home this morning neither, so he must be stuck in town. Wait, the phones are out. So it was just mine. I hate to say it, but if I can't get the police up here, I think we need to, uh... Record this. Feeling sick, I pulled out my phone. Still no bars. It was useless for making calls, but I could still take pictures or make a video. I can't believe I'm doing this, but someone might need to see this later. Ugh. I hit record on my phone. It felt gross, like I was committing some kind of crime. Grayson pulled out a pocket knife and looked from, and looked from it to the creaking rope. There was a thick knot in the wood by the base of the tree that the rope had been fixed around. She started walking towards it. Uh, I will let her cut the body down. I don't know. This is probably a bad idea. I'm gonna let her do it. I'm gonna cut him down. It just don't seem right leaving him like that. Yeah, go ahead. She soldered the rope with her pocket knife. It took a few minutes, but the rope finally snapped. The body unceremoniously sunk to the ground in a puff of red and white. Should we take a closer look? Someone strung him up. They could still be around here. Maybe looking will give us a clue. Yeah, maybe. Oh, boy, hi, I will take a look at the, I take off the hood. I reached towards the hood and tried to pull it off. The back crackled with frozen water but remained fixed in place. The noose was pulled tight around the edges of the sack. Folds of purpling skin peeked out from under the burlap flaps. It's too tight to remove without loosening the knot first. You don't need to do that. Say to yourself, whoever did this might be around here. We should get as much of a record as possible to take to the police. What if the killer moves the body or something? I handed her my phone, which was still recording video. I pulled at the knot and managed to get to slide up just enough to slip the bag off the man's head. I turned to Grayson. Ready? She nodded, looking ill but determined, and focused on the record 
and focus the recording phone on the dead man's head. Do it. Back set up the man's head. At first, I couldn't even comprehend what I was seeing. What? Hair. The back of his head, but he's... If I could see his chest, the body is... Ah! I almost threw up once I realized what I was seeing. His head had been twisted completely backwards. The face pressed into the ground and obscured by the snow. His neck. Who... Who could have done something like that? Why wouldn't someone decide to? The skin spiraled tightly. Bits of beard and spots of acne caught up in that horrible, inhuman curve. Skin. Skin shouldn't ever look like that. An owl hooted overhead while I lay curled around Bree's arm. I could hear the buzzing of flies growing louder around us. It's strange. The owl. These bugs. Life is completely the same as it was before. A gurgling moan cuts through the air. Oh! It wasn't coming from the still body in front of me. It was over in the shadows on my right. Tyler? Ugh. Hang on. Tyler! I'm coming! Please! I tried to stand again. My broken leg wouldn't hold me, and I fell to the ground for a second time. I dragged myself over towards the noise. My vision was clearer now. The blood on my forehead congealed and ropey now that it was clotting. Uh, I could see, hear, I could see something jerky in the shadows now. The shape would spasm and jitter for a few moments, then go absolutely still. Uh, oh, no, 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 no! The screams brought me back away from the horrors in my head and back to the horror in front of me. Grayson, what? She was crushed over the man's twisted head while I was staring off. She must have flipped him on the side because his face was visible now. Daddy! No! No! Dad! Dad! My cell phone lay forgotten in the snow next to her. She shrieked. He looked surprised, like he didn't expect to die. All those bite marks. Why? No, 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 no! You gotta get up! You just gotta! This has gotta be one of my bad dreams! Dad! I can't let her keep looking at this. I went over and crouched next to her. My mouth was so dry it was hard to swallow. Grayson. Grayson, we need to go. You shouldn't look at this. I picked up my phone and stopped the video that was recording. Grayson turned towards me, face streaked with tears. It's, it's real, isn't it? It's real. I'm really here. I nodded and she swallowed. I, I need to go. I need to go. I can't be here. I need... I need to be alone. She stood up. Looking panicked, she was looking at anything but the body in front of us. Ask her to stay with you, let her go alone. I'll ask her to stay with me. You shouldn't be alone right now. Go back to my cabin. We can wait for my mom, then go get the police. What the hell do you know about what I should be doing? She was close to hysterical. Now that I could blame her, the father's dead eyes were staring blankly towards us. I shuddered. Just trust me. You think being alone is what you want, but... But it isn't. My voice cracked. Please, just listen to me. Please don't make me say it. I know what I want, Nick! I know! You don't know nothing about this! This! She clutched at her chest and knew exactly how her heart was breaking into pieces. We're the same now. It's the same thing I've been feeling ever since. Tell her about the accident. This past summer, I watched my best friends die. I whispered the words so softly, they were almost lost in the breeze. Grayson still heard them though, and she went quiet, her eyes going wide. It was a car accident, but they... it wasn't... I looked up and she stepped back at the expression on my face. The way they looked was... wrong. Her arm was... his head was... I... What I'm trying to say is that, after it happened... I thought I wanted to be alone, but every time, every time I am, it's worse, Grayson. It's so much worse. You, you don't want to be alone. Not really. She reached out to me and grabbed my hands. Her touch was so warm and alive. Tears were falling down her cheeks again. I know if it'll make me feel better to come with you, Nick, but... Uh, 
but I don't think it'll make me feel worse. And, and if I go off alone, then you're going to be alone too, huh? No, that's not what I meant. That's what I've been seeing in your face, huh? Oh, them times you've been looking off, you... You were seeing your friends. You don't have to worry about me. The only thing to worry about you is just about the only thing keeping me together right now. She smiled and it was so full of sorrow that I burst into tears. Why am I crying? It's her dad that's dead. I've been four months to get over my... It's... I've had four months to get over my... Ah, oh, this is so embarrassing! Come on, let's go back to your cabin. I'm sure I got lots more crying to do myself once we get there. We walked back in silence. Occasionally, one of us would take a shuddering breath and we would lean into one another. She broke down twice and each time I stood there, let her sob into my shoulder. Better make sure we avoid that deer. Neither of us needs to see any more corpses right now. When we got back to the cabin, the lights were still on. I left the TV on in the bedroom. And it was playing a talk show rerun. I'm glad I forgot to turn everything off. I don't know if I could handle it being quiet in here. I'm gonna lay down for a bit. Slept real bad last night and now... Well, is it right if I use one of the beds? Yeah, sure. Can I leave the bedroom door open? She nodded. So long as it's alright to leave the TV on. I'm thinking it helps. Yeah, I think so too. She went warily over to the unmade bed I had slept in the night before and curled up in the ball, her head buried in the pillow. I pulled out my phone and saw the video app was still open. I closed it out and pulled up a cheery looking bubble matching game. Perfect. I can just zone out and try not to think. Hours passed that way. I matched color bubbles in the living room and looked over at Grayson every now and then. She'd fallen asleep in a way that only a person consumed by grief could. It was a sleep that was both restless and deep, like being drowned at the bottom of a black sea. The sun was setting now. There was no sign of my mom. The road must still be close, like the news had forecast earlier. Knock knock. I jumped at the sound and looked over at Grayson, but she was still asleep. I went over and closed the bedroom door so I wouldn't wake her. I forgot. Felix said it was coming tonight. Maybe he can help. I answered the front door and Felix was standing there. He was a little further back than he was before, probably because I'd almost run into him twice. He was holding an old videotape. Did I really only see him this morning? Feels like it's been longer. As your mother returned, I picked something we all might enjoy watching. Oh man, I'm glad to see you. Do you know if there's a working phone anywhere? We need to call the cops. Why? Because of a dead deer down the road? I hardly see why the police need to be called over a thing like that. Anyway, it's a nature documentary about... What? No, there's been a murder. A man, he... he was... Felix cocked his head and furrowed his brow in concern. He looked in from the doorway. His eyes flickered around the room as if searching for traces of blood. Are you alright? What did you see? Never mind about that. You have a working phone, or a way to get into town? He shrugged regretfully inside, fingers playing with the edges of the tape. No, I... Don't, actually. The road is still closed and I'm embarrassed to admit it, but something took out the rest of the phone lines up here after yours disconnected. It's the entire system that's down right now. Oh, God. Wait, I have an idea. Maybe someone else up here has a satellite phone. We could go and check. Wait, why didn't I think of that earlier? I guess that means our moving plans are ruined. What did the body look like? Did the bear kill him? No, no, I told you. It's a murder. Somebody... Somebody hung him naked from a tree. I felt ill to seeing it. I looked over back. I looked back over my shoulder at my phone and shivered. And I was disgusting enough to record it. Grayson's dad made a video for dad swinging there in the hood and... Ugh! Felix followed my gaze to my phone and seemed to realize what it meant. You took pictures? His voice was quiet and I couldn't tell if it was more a question or an accusation. The video, actually. I recorded it. Hey, come in and watch it. Maybe I can... Maybe I can assist. 
I really think we should just try to see if someone has a cell iPhone. Nick, I know you're in a panic, but think. Any one of those tenants could be your murderer. Maybe I'll be able to see something you missed. I should look at the video before we go. I will show him the video. I've got no reason. I mean, I have reasons to doubt him right now. He's acting really suspect, but I'll show him the video. Yeah, you're right. You should come in and see it. Felix stepped inside and went to sit on the couch. He leaned forward expectantly, his under arms propped on elegantly crossed legs. I pulled up the video and handed him my phone. Could you play it for me? You should probably watch it again too. Maybe you'll notice something different. Yeah, sure, I guess. I don't want to see this again. I hit play. I said, I looked out at the carpet. Sure, maybe Felix thought I'd find something new, but he wasn't there. I didn't know what it felt like. Do you see anything new? His voice was so close, it made me jump. He had leaned over so much his mouth was right next to my ear when he spoke. Ah, uh, no, sorry. I forced my eyes back to the video. I'm loosening the noose now. It was as if I could feel the rough rope in my hands again. God damn it, Nick is like so freaking traumatized at this point. I'm sliding the bag off his head. Tyler was still gurgling and twitching. Every time I thought he was dead, he would move again, spasming and moaning. I looked down at my bloody hands and up towards Tyler's deformed face. This... This is my fault. I... I can at least do this. A car drove by above me. Uh, we had rolled too far down the embankment and into a corpse of trees. We weren't visible from the road. I yelled anyway. Down here! Help! Nothing. Again. I'd be yelling on and off for the past ten minutes. Beside me, Tyler groaned. I'm going to do it. I can't watch this anymore. And when he's going to die before anybody comes. Lifting my shaking hands, I pinched Tyler's nose shut, then placed my palm over his mouth. It won't take much. He's already gonna die. Just... Just suffering. I'm sorry, man. I'm so... I'm so freaking sorry. Nobody's coming. You're... You're dying. He screwed up. Now, this is all I can do. It's strange how he has bite marks all over his body like that. That somebody hung him. Why? What? Bite marks? No, that's all right. His, his head is... Nick, did you look away again? I held myself over Tyler until he stopped moving. Oh, I'm looking. I did this. It's my fault. Nick, are you listening? Oh, oh, sorry, I... Did you see something? Well, I can tell you that the man is Mr. Nash, the caretaker of this property. My father hired him about three years ago. Shame, really. He stared off at the wall, shaking his head in disbelief. He worked for you. Then Grayson. Oh, his daughter. Yes, I know her. Uh, she was the one screaming on the video, wasn't she? I picked at the couch cushion, not wanting to look up. Yeah, that was her. What an unfortunate way to find out a horrible thing like that. I wish there was something I could do to help. That's why we should look to see if someone has a working phone. Look, I know someone up here has to be the murderer, but I can't just sit here and wait for the road to clear. I suppose you're right. It might end up being just as dangerous to wait as it would be to ask around. Yeah, hold on. Let me see if Grayson wants to come. He looks surprised. Miss Nash. I mean, Grayson is here. Why didn't you tell me? I didn't think it was important. I just watched a girl find her father's dead body, and you didn't think it was important. Unbelievable. Look, I'm sorry. I did I'm sorry I didn't say. Let's just forget it and go, alright? Just give me a second. I went to go tell Grace I was leaving, but she was still so deeply asleep that I didn't want to wake her. She probably won't be able to wake... She probably won't be able to sleep like that very often anymore. Now with what happened, better not bother her. She's still asleep. Might as well let her, since... Well, we might not even find a phone. We want to get her hopes up. Very well. Shall we? Uh, leave her a note. Sure. Just give me a second to leave her a note and we can go. I scribbled out a quick note and left it in the middle of the small dining table in the front room. 
when with Felix to look for a way to call the police. Be back soon, Nick. I met Felix outside and we started the walk over to the nearest cabin, which was about a half mile away. Are you enjoying your stay here? Well, uh, besides the body. Terrible. Just terrible. I still can't believe it. Well, it does look, uh, pretty nice out here. So your dad owns this place. Really don't need to talk about the body anymore. Just, just have to focus on finding a way to get the police here. Well, I own the place. Given my age, I find it easier to simply say I am assisting my father. At times, the older guests, they... Well, an 18-year-old boy is not always respected. It's part of the reason why I hired Mr. Nash to assist in day-to-day -day management. Then he just had to go and get himself killed. I'm going to have trouble hiring anyone new. His expression darkened as he spoke. It's kind of cold, man. He literally just died. You're right. Of course. I should be more sympathetic. I just... I don't want to risk my home or my business, and... Well, this most certainly will. No fault on Mr. Nash's part, obviously. Tragedy can make you think of strange things. I couldn't stop thinking about the flies landing on their bodies, so... Yeah, I guess he's right. Strange things. Yeah, I guess. This property has been in my family for over a century. We built these cabins, you know? Do you like them? They're, uh, they're very nice. For a moment, he went quiet, and I thought the conversation was over. He passed away pretty unexpectedly. My birth father. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. He was not the smartest of men. Never really understood what was important. Almost lost everything we had worked for. In a way, it was lucky he died. I inherited his land. My godfather paid off his debts, so it wasn't reclaimed by his... Creditors. Jeez, oversharing much? So your, uh, godfather gave you this place after your dad died? Does he live around here too? An indiscernible look flickered across his face. He did not give it to me. This place has always been mine, and no, not anymore. Just trying to sound interested in your complicated ownership story. You don't need to look annoyed. So what about your parents? You liked them, do you? He looked at me intently, as if eager to know my response. Yeah, I like him fine. No argument, no misunderstandings. They haven't done anything to hurt you. What? No, I mean, sure, sometimes they're annoying, but... My mistake, then. What is this guy getting at? I thought I heard you fighting your mother last night. You know, before the phones cut off, I was doing my first rounds. What? You were watching me? No, no, not at all. You were just fairly loud. I was curious because of my own experiences. I know what resentment like that feels like. Well, it isn't that. She just thinks I can't handle myself. It's not the same. I see. But of course, you can handle yourself. It's what you've been looking off at, right? Somebody you know died, and you saw it. Yet here you are, holding yourself together. Even after seeing another corpse. That seems like handling itself to me. He sounds almost impressed. How would you know anything about that? He raised his hands up defensively. Simply that we are brothers in suffering. I told you, my father died, but that was not the whole matter. He... <sighs> he killed himself. Sliced his own throat open in front of me. Perhaps he thought I was ungrateful. Oh god, if he's 18 then, that had to have been only a few years ago. Oh, dad, that's real terrible man, I, I can't even... I think you can, I saw it in you from the beginning Nick, when you threw that door open, I thought, now, here's a man that knows suffering. H how? How could I tell? Because I know my own soul Nick, I know it. I see it here. He reaches out and made a gesture that framed my face, his hand hovering only an inch away from my skin. You look the same tonight as you did last night. Now tell me, how that can be when you found a body today? I... I... Because when you saw before, it was worse. I know, because I have seen worse too. He paused to take a long look at me. 
It was ice cold outside, but I was sweating. Chill droplets streaking down the sides of my face. You were close to them? They were my best friends, so of course I was. Why the hell am I telling him any of this? You can tell me, Nick. I know how you feel. You saw your dad... You saw your dad kill himself. Well, I killed my best friends. What happened? I wanted to go out with Bree, so I asked her to this graduation party, you know, and Tyler. He wanted to be my wingman, so he came along for the car ride instead of meeting me there. Wingman? Yeah, you know, a friend who helps you get a date. Oh, I see. We went to pick her up in my car, and we were just messing around, joking and stuff. Then out of nowhere, this deer just darts in the road. I wasn't looking. It's my fault. I just swerved and flipped the car off the side, and, and the embankment. It was steep, where we crashed. Nobody could see us from the road. We were there for a long time. I didn't say anything to that. Instead, looked off to my right. That was when I saw it. A bright splotch of red in the white snow. Felix, do you see that? I pointed it out to him, and he furrowed his brow in thought. From the deer, perhaps? There's no way. This is too far away. I walked toward the mark, heart hammering in my chest. Please don't be anything. Please, please. The snow had pl splotches all across it. I turned on my phone's flashlight to get a better view in the twilight. Prince, I, there were by the deer. Felix stepped next to me, taking a protective stance as he surveyed the marks in front of us and glanced up at the sky. The bear? Are those marks fresh? I looked more closely at them. Some were half filled with fallen snow and the blood had frozen and crystallized. I could have pulled an entire frozen hunk out of the ground if I wanted to. I think they're from last night, which means this blood is too. At least that means we're safe for now. Wait, is that another one? I looked over to where he was pointing. He was right. There was another bloody mark there, and the prints were prowling right toward it. This must be where Grayson's dad was attacked. At least, I hope it was. I'm not so sure, Nick. There's also a third one, and the prints. Aren't they moving towards the cabin, not off into the woods? Now that we'd reached the second mark, I could also see the third one, along the roof of another cabin over the snowdrift. He's right. Whatever caused these princes walking towards that cabin and away from the woods. Felix kneeled down next to the closest mark. He picked something up and showed it to me. A shattered piece of bone covered in bite marks. The more I look at this, the more I think, those prints, Nick, does it look like a bear to you? I wouldn't exactly call myself a bear expert. He sighed and turned back towards the cabin. Well, never mind. I suspect we may find more of an answer there. He gestured towards the building, and I felt a shiver run down my spine. The prints and the bloody marks. It's all going that way. We could just go back, you know? Oh no, I don't think there's any going back now. Besides, I have to check on my guests if something has happened. Well, I would have to be the one to report it, wouldn't I? He didn't wait for my answer. Just stood up and walked around the snowdrift that was blocking the cabin from view. Oh no. I can't just leave him. Ugh. I walked up to the cabin to look around. There was an SUV covered in a mound of snow parked in front of the building. And when I got there, Felix was surveying the door from about five feet back. Uh, look at the snow, go to the cabin door, look at the SUV. Uh, look at the S- Uh, look at the snow! The clean prints we had followed here led up to the cabin, but coming out. Oh. Oh no. The prints were thick with blood. They were so deeply saturated that there were entire frozen pools in their wake. Huge droplets scattered in the snow between each gory step. Uh, look at the SUV. This car must have been parked here since before the storm. The SUV had a vanity plate that read Hunter MA surrounded by a frame with little deer printed all over it. What's that supposed to mean? Hunter mom? Kinda tacky. Uh, go to the cabin door. The door was hanging open. And just creaking softly at every gust of wind, Felix was eyeing it, looking concerned. You don't have to. He pushed on the door hard enough to send it flying open. The already battered top hinge gave way, and the door moaned as it thudded to a lopsided halt against the wall. 
Ugh! I gagged as a, as a deeply unpleasant metallic tang filled my nose and mouth. I, I know the smell. It had to have been at least six hours since the crash, and the sun was starting to rise. Tyler and Bree lay on either side of me, and each minute of growing daylight was a new torture. Uh, uh, help! I wasn't shouting anymore, just whispering the words every time I thought I heard someone drive by above me on the road. I tried to climb up the embankment a few hours ago, but I couldn't stand on my leg and could feel the bone grinding whenever I tried. It was hugely swollen now and pulsed unpleasantly every time I took a breath, constricted by my jeans. If I'm here much longer, I think there's a utility knife in my glove box. If I can get to that, I would have to climb over Bree to get it. She was lying motionless against the overturned car, her body half crushed under the hood. They both had gone rigid. I could smell something more foul starting to waft from their bodies. Oh my god! What? Am, am I hearing things? I turned my head towards the road. I saw a man standing there with a bike. Hang in there! I'll get help! Sure. Help. I'll just stay down here for... What? Another hour? For the rest of my life? My hands were brown and crusty with dried gore. I stared down at them and said nothing. Felix pulled out a handkerchief and pressed it up against his nose and mouth so as to not breathe in the rancid air. Ask him if he has another, go into the cabin. He'll ask if he has another. Do you have another one of those? Ah, yes I do. Here. He produced a second claw from his pocket and handed it to me. It smelled old and dusty, as if he had kept it in the back of a wooden drawer and never used it. Still was better than breathing in the unfiltered air. Felix stepped inside and followed closely behind him. Oh my god! Is that... a body? It was hard to tell. It had been so mangled, hunks of flesh were scattered across the floor. I'm glad Grace isn't here to see this, but she's alone now, and now there's more than one body. I don't know who this is. Nobody was renting this cabin out. Alarmed, he swiftly walked over to take a closer look. Examine the body? I followed Felix over to the corpse. Look at ahead. The face had been reduced to ribbons of deep red gouges. The only way I could tell where the eyes used to be was the, was the white ridges of an exposed brow bone above the eye socket. The entire lower half of the jaw had been ripped off from the rest of the face. That fleshy lump over there would be the rest of the jaw, unlike it matters. Look at the hands. The hands were the most intact things about the body. A shotgun lay next to the corpse, one of the rigid fingers wrapped in the trigger. The nails were painted and they looked perfect. No chips. That's kind of weird. Shouldn't there have been more of a struggle? I would have thought that would mess up the polish. Bright yellow nail polish. Well, whoever this was certainly didn't have any taste. That's needlessly judgmental. I know, it probably looked pretty good when there was. A whole unbutchered person to go with the hands. When there was what? A plaid shirt to go with it? Yeah, because the most important thing to look at here. He looked at me sharply and smiled? I'm doing it again, aren't I? Whoever this was, they were squatting and now they are also dead in my very ruined cabin. I know I should be more compassionate, but this place is my life. Look, all I'm saying is there's a gun over there, a person has been ripped apart, and you're going on about the nail polish. Well, I don't think the cause of death was a gunshot wound, do you? He gave a wide, sweeping gesture that, enc that encompassed the bloody ruins of the corpse. Yeah, okay, I get it. You love your cabins, and one of them is all messed up. Doesn't change the fact that a gun would be helpful. I reached down to pick up the weapon, and a mostly severed arm came with it, the final tendons detaching with snap. A sucking, squelching noise accompanied its rise. The finger was still wrapped around the trigger. This is like Marie. No, oh, no. I have to keep it together. There are other people counting on me now. Felix, can you pull that off? I stared up at the ceiling, trying not to think about a swinging arm on the trigger. That was a snap, and I looked down. Felix had peeled the finger back. It was so rigid, it had cracked when he pulled it off. He threw the arm back on the floor in distaste. You're welcome. 
is the weapon of any use? I don't know. It's a gun. Maybe it can protect us from a crazed murderer or bear or whatever the heck is going on. So, is it loaded? Good point. I checked. It was double barrel and it was single shell loaded in the chamber. One was fired? Feel any safer? Is he mocking me? Yeah, a little. I mean, I can at least try to kill whatever did this before it finishes me off. I wouldn't worry about that. You have me. What the heck is that supposed to mean? Is he planning on judging the bear to death? Alright, well, I'll just keep this as a backup plan. I looked back down at the corpse and could see there was something in the front pocket of the shirt. The fabric had glued itself to the exposed muscle above the ribcage. Averting my gaze, I reached into the pocket. It was sticky with cold blood, but I did find a hard metal cylinder and pulled it out. A second shell. Suddenly, I heard a voice call out from somewhere outside the cabin, along with the crunching of footsteps. Nick! You hear, Nick? Wait, this car... and... That, that's blood! I turned towards the door, holding the shotgun loosely in one hand, my bloody fingers clutching the extra shell in the other. Grayson stood in the doorway, a shadowy outline in the growing dusk. Grayson! You're here! It's been another death! It was that bear! She didn't say anything, just stared. Her eyes went from me to Felix who had stood up and straightened out his vest, then down to the mangled, faceless corpse. The car. No, she shouldn't be anywhere near here. She's in the city. She never come back up here since. Since. She walked over. Each slow step took an eternity. She froze when she saw the painted nails and started shaking uncontrollably. This. This is my mom. She said it with a detached disbelief. Then looked at the shotgun in my hand. That's her gun. I know it. That's hers! M maybe it's not. Grayson, you said your mom was in the city, right? Maybe it's not. Does it got a low rose on the stock? Yeah, it does. She looked like she was about to burst into tears, but then a look of deep rage bubbled up on her face. And what was you doing, Felix? I saw you around last night. When I... Why didn't you do nothing? Felix eyed her and sniffed distastefully. I should ask you the same thing. I saw nothing on my walk last night. And last I checked, they were your parents. What were you even doing outside? Grayson, you were out last night too. Yeah, I was. I was. I went walking. I needed to get out of the house, so I left to cool off. Cool off from what? She looked incredibly sad and stared straight at me, so as not to see the body on the floor. I got in a real yelling match with my dad. I just... I just wanted to see my mom, you know? In the city. He was telling me he ain't ever gonna let me go, cause... He needed me here. And I... I... I told him he should just drop dead, and... Then... I could go where I... won, and I... Left. Nick, the last thing I ever told him was that he should die. He tried to stop me too. He was telling me I was grounded, grounded and couldn't leave. I went to my room and left out of the window before he noticed. What did you do when you were out? Just walking around, you know? I was real pissed, so kind of... Caked up some snow and rocks and stuff like that. Ran into Felix and he was being right rotten like he is now. Ask about how my mom is when he knows she left. She started shaking uncontrollably again when she mentioned her mom. She must be trying not to think about what's, what's on the floor behind us. And I sat down to think on one of the cabin porches and I must have fallen asleep. I get this sleepwalking thing real bad sometimes. Next morning, I wake up at home. I didn't, didn't think to question your father's absence. He goes to town all the time. I figured he must have gone before the storm last night. While his daughter was missing. Maybe he didn't know. I snuck up real good. He could have just left thinking he'd let me cool down. I need a car to be hidden anywhere. Wouldn't it wouldn't have been no big deal to leave. A likely story. Nick, you, you believe me, right? 
Wait. Uh, uh, I I don't know. It, it, it feels like she's telling the truth. But I, I have no reason to doubt Grayson. I have no reason to doubt anyone here, except for maybe, except for maybe like uh like Felix. But aside from that, I, I have no reason to doubt anyone. Yeah. yeah, I believe you. Something weird is going on here, but I think she's told me everything she knows. Felix, Grayson just told us what she did that night. What did you do? Me? I already told you what I did. I think you're always a little more detailed than I was walking around and looking at stuff. That was insolent! Grayson must be rubbing off on you. So what did you do last night? Yeah! What, what have you been up to, Felix? I saw you slinking around. Very well. Went to look around the property, as I do quite often. He stood rigidly, his voice clipped and sour, as if this entire thing were a massive waste of his time. I first went to visit Mr. Nash to see if there was anything that needed to be attended to. I thought better of it when I heard his hysterical daughter railing on about wanting to murder him because she couldn't go on a trip. That's not what! Do you want to know what I was up to or not? Grayson mumbled something under his breath but didn't continue to argue. Then I decided to check on the patrons staying here. But before I visited any of them, I ran to Grayson again, this time sitting in front of the vacant cabin, pouting. Actually, it was this cabin, come to think of it. What? Grayson was at this cabin last night. Uh, yeah, yeah, right. I, I guess it was this one, but I must have left before anything happened. There was no car here. Well, I can't speak to anything that happened after I left, but Miss Nash is correct. There was no car when I came across her. I continued my rounds, or rather, I intended to, but ended up way late at my first visit. A gentleman staying down the road by the name of Mr. Booker invited me in to talk, which was when the snowstorm hit. He was complaining about bears getting into his garbage. I got stuck there for a duration of the storm. Once it cleared up, instead of heading home right away, I decided to make one more stop. There was a new guest here, and I wished to welcome them. That will be you, Nick. Yeah, you did come to see me. Oh, and one more thing. I ran to Mr. Nash while he was out looking for his daughter. Why didn't he say anything earlier? You, you ran into my dad? Then it was you! You killed him! Oh, please. If I had, why would I be telling you about this now? No, he was looking for you, and I told him where to find you. Here, at this cabin. He also mentioned something about his wife. I believe he made a call to her about your disappearance before the lines went down. You didn't go with him? Why would I? I want to know part in family drama, particularly if it isn't my own. Don't you find it suspicious? Both of them go to where Miss Nash was that night and turn up dead in the morning. I know I do. That's only because you're telling lies. Your word ain't worth nothing, and that's, and that's all we've got to go on right now. We have to take you at your words as well. Why should I believe that you left here before this massacre happened? He twisted his lips into a grimace and gestured to the gore-strewn floor. Perhaps you did leave before your mother came back. At least, at first, somebody had to hang their body up. But I know for certain you must have returned. There's a dead woman in here to prove it. How would you know about my daddy hanging? See, Nick? He must have killed him! I told him he was helping me while you were... Damn it, Nick! Why'd you go off gallivanting off with this snake? He's always been real mean to me. I don't know why I didn't think of it right when I saw my daddy. He killed him! I know it! I just knew it! What about the other guests? Mr. Booker, you said? Felix, is anyone else up here? Felix shrugged and seemed to dismiss the idea. Nobody is as suspicious as Miss Nash. Miss Lee is here with her three-year-old son, so I find it hard to believe she decided to go on a late-night murder spree. Mr. Booker is younger and staying here alone, but he is uh, not in the best of shape, to put it mildly. Honestly, I thought he was the dead man when you first told me you found a corpse. Finally, there are Mr. and Mrs. Lloyd, a retired couple who drive in from town to go on walks. They became trapped up here because of the storm. I find it a bit ludicrous to suggest some retirees lotted a woman with a shotgun and hung a corpse from a tree. 
Do you? He thought one of them could have done it earlier, though, tonight. Out of an abundance of caution, Nick. That was also before we found Miss, Mrs. Nash butchered in the cabin. Her daughter was sitting in front of earlier in the night. Someone is definitely responsible for this, and there are so many things we don't... There's so many things that don't add up. Uh, oh no, frick! I have to choose to either side with Felix or side with Grayson. Right, I think for now, we're just gonna side with Grayson because I like Grayson better. And then later on, what we'll do is that we'll side with Felix. I, I am not sure what's right here, but let's side with Grayson. Grayson, just a minute. You did... Wait, what? I, I, I sided with Grayson! What? No! I think Felix has something to do with this. Don't, don't I? What? No, no, Nick, I never. I'm almost lying dead on the floor and you're telling me I knew it when I was walking in the woods with you? No, Grayson, I believe you, or do I? Felix didn't do this. I, I don't know. He's my friend. I believe him. I, Grayson, I think, no. You were at this cabin. You were mad at your parents. You told me yourself. Your dad didn't understand you. You told me that. And then I t find you out you told him you wanted him dead? Nick, that was just mad talk. I never killed my dad. Never. She's dangerous, Nick. Maybe we should shoot her now. I clutched the gun in my hands more tightly, but didn't raise it. I, I don't think we need to do that, Felix. I didn't kill anybody. He did, Nick. And he's going to get you next. I, I'm going to help you. She rushed at me and grabbed at the shotgun in my hands. No, she's going to kill Felix. Nick, she wants to kill me. See? She's a cold-blooded murderer. Shoot her. Grayson rushed over and grabbed at the gun again, successfully this time. N Nick! You shot! Why? Her blood coated me in a fine mist. She toppled to the floor, shotgun pellet sizzling in her flesh. Grayson! No! I tried to yell, but instead I stood there, suddenly looking down at her dying on the floor. My expression was cold and lax. She stared up at me, chest heaving, the rattling of her breath growing more and more shallow, until with one final gasp, she stopped moving. I was worried you wouldn't do that for a moment. Good boy, listening to instructions. He walked his fingers along my shoulder and wiped away a spatter of blood from my cheek. Why? Why can't I move? I... I shot Grayson? I can feel you thrashing around in there, Nick. You have to let go for this to last. Why would I do that? Grayson is... I have to kill this guy. Grayson is dead, Nick. It's only us now. No, he's done something to me. I can't... Yes, now we can finally be alone. The words fell from my mouth with nothing but apathy, even as the pools under Grayson's body spread around the soles of my shoes. Time to go, Nick. No. My jaw felt like it was going to break, spitting out that one word. I had done it. I'm going to tell you once, Nick. Heck me. Fall into my voice. Drown in it. You do that. And you'll never feel anything but contentment. Abandon your regret. Maybe one day, I'll even let you out again, just as my master allowed me. He bit into my neck, and I felt a wave of warmth pass through me. Uh, resist? No, if I just... Hush! I took a stumbling step away from Felix. Defined until the end, I see. Well, you leave me no choice. Come. Ah! I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Of course. Oh no. He grabbed me by the front of my jacket and pulled me outside. I let my feet hang limp and they smeared a trail of Grayson's blood across the already destroyed cabin. Oh! He stared down at me, his skin shifting from porcelain pale to the gray blue of a long dead corpse. The red glow of his eyes ate deep into my mind. Give in, Nick. You're already mine. Don't make me hurt you. I stood there, staring blankly at him. Then he reached out to touch my face. I pulled my head back to avoid him, 
The muscles in my neck creaked as they fought to remain in place. Sha, you brought this on yourself. Come. Uh, no, not again! Uh, Nick, no! I mean, Felix, no! I followed him, falling into the snow and tripping over my own feet as I tried to resist the need to stay by his side. Where are we? No, oh, my cabin! Can I come in, Nick? No! Yes. Oh, boy. Felix walked me back into the cabin, where he sat me down on the couch. He bit into my neck on the opposite side and drank in more blood. I found myself leaning into him, half, eyes half-lidded, my breathing shallow. No, he... he's... can't stop him. I have to fight! I jerked away and woundedly fell to the floor. I can hardly move unless he wants me to. Sit back up. There's about to be a show just for us. Unless you want to give in now, it will save us some needless suffering and unpleasantness. I sat rigidly on the floor, willing my joints to stay frozen. He sniffed indignantly and yanked me up, propping me crookedly on the side of the couch. I heard the sound of tires on snow. Mom, no! One more chance, Nick. Either way, I'll bring you to heal. How? How can I give him? How can I give him what he wants? I, I need to save her. Felix stood and walked over to the front door. He casually leaned up against the doorframe and shook his head regretfully. Seems like you need a better reason to give up, Nick. Let me give you one. Tell me, what happened at the accident with the arm? The door opened. I'm back. The snow oh, storm really. Ah! Felix grabbed my mother's right arm in a vice-like grip, and she cried out, struggling to break free. Nick! What's happening? Tell me, Nick. What happened to the arm? Don't tell him. If I tell him, when I tried to pull Bree over, it came off. Oh, that's too bad. Like this. Oh! There was a ripping and popping sound, and Felix lazily detached my mother's arm from her body. She screamed and screamed, and would have fallen on the floor if Felix hadn't grabbed the back of her jacket and propped her up. Show me how you held it. He threw her arm over, and I caught it, cradling it in my arms, pressing my face against its bloody stump. It was warm, and I could feel the muscles and nerves still twitching under the skin, confused at their sudden disconnection from their owner. Tears started streaming down my cheeks. I couldn't speak, except in answer to Felix's questions. I tried to look anywhere but at my mother, but my head wouldn't move. This... this can't be real. I have to get away. I have to! And Tyler, where was he hurt, Nick? No, don't do that! I reached up and pointed to my head. My mother had started whimpering. Her eyes were blank with shock at the loss of her arm. Like this... He grabbed her head and smashed it into the corner of a brick fireplace, sending her crumpling to the ground, twitching. The side of her skull was folded in on itself, a deep crease pooling with blood at the point of impact. Show me what you did then, Nick. Your mercy kill. I stood up and took my jacket off. I walked over to her crumpled, gasping form. A line of drool slid from her lips. I... I can't... I can't do this! I need to run! I can't do this again! You can always run, Nick. Don't you see it? I've given you a way out. You don't have to feel this way. In the back of my mind, I felt a numbness radiating out at the source of Felix's influence. If I could just go there. If I could just stay there! I wrapped my jacket around her head and pressed down. She stopped moving, but I no longer cared. And Savior... I can't feel them anymore. I don't have to do anything, but... That's good, Nick. That's good. Come with me, and you'll stay safe. But if you leave... For a flash, everything weighed down on me at once, and I screamed. Tyler, Bree, Grayson, my mom. I felt them all die by my hands all at once. The mishappened lump of my mother's head twitched one last time. No, no! Let me go back! I need to go back! You didn't say the magic word. 
Please, please, I'll do anything. Just let me go back. I can't do this. I tried to shove myself into that dark space. I had been in only moments before, but it was gone. Felix spread his arms out wide. Come here, come to me, and I'll let you go back there. Shaking and dizzy, I stumbled towards him. I clutched desperately at his vest, and he set his bloody hand down gently on top of my head, stroking my hair. Look at me. I looked up and gazed deep into his glowing eyes. I felt that cavern of numbness open back up inside of me. See? Look. It's right here. I whimpered and curled back into the freeing apathy that Felix offered. I'll do anything for... anything for... But I thought it disappeared. There was no more need to wonder about anything at all. Felix would do it for me. All I had to do was listen. Well, clearly that was not a good ending. So what happens if I just give up? I should just listen to. I slumped down into his bite and felt a warm trickle of blood drip down my collarbone. See, isn't that better? Everything is fine. Come on. There was the crunch of snow beneath my feet. We were outside now. And yep. I looked up at him and he gazed down at me, benevolent and understanding. The shadow of Grayson's face floated into my mind's eye. Then Tyler and Bree followed. All of them stared at me with an accusation in their eyes. I whimpered. Oh no, that won't do. Go deeper where they can't find you. Here. He gently placed a hand on my shoulder and stared directly into my eyes. I felt myself falling into that gaze. It was as if a cavern had opened up in the back of my skull. A patch, a place of darkness and safety. A new Felix was there, waiting for me, arms outstretched. I need to go there. I'll be safe there. He'll keep me safe. Let me take your pain. I can suffer for you. There's no need for you to destroy yourself with grief. I... I was suffering? Felix smiled. You were... No longer. It's over now. Forget. You were so much more than those... Old memories. Would you like to see your new home? I have... A new home. With you. Of course you do. Ever since the death of my master, I have been looking for someone like you. Someone who was special. Someone like me. Everything within me radiated joy. He wanted me. I was special, and I would never have to leave his side. I grabbed his hand reverently, but he pulled it away, shaking his head in disappointment. With calculated ease, he slaps me across the face and sets me sprawling across the ground. I landed in a crystallized pool of blood, my hand pressed into an old paw print. You do not touch me unless I give permission. I'm sorry, please don't leave me. Tears streamed down my cheeks. If he leaves me, I'll be alone. Those faces, they'll start looking at me again. He bent down and looked me straight in the eyes. I started to reach out, then hesitated. Permission. I needed permission. Felix smiled and reached out, twirling a piece on my hair between his fingers before offering his hand out to me. See? That wasn't so hard. Here, let me help you up. I grasped his hand and everything was right once more. He pulled me up and I stood there, gore spattered and beaming. Now, come with me. That will show you what it's like to be free. I'm already free. Of course you are. Because you are mine. Oh boy. I, I'm guessing any route with Felix is definitely going to be a bad end. Apparently, I was really close to getting the true ending earlier. Uh, but I did, of course, make a few mistakes. Uh, for example, like over here, when we, uh, when we let her cut the body down, we were supposed to stop her instead. So let's stop her. Wait, there might be something important here. We should at least look around first. She didn't look happy, but nodded in agreement and stepped back again. Ah. <sighs> Well, let's see. Examine the ground. My eyes were locked on the body. I wanted to look away, but it was so horrible that I couldn't. I kept staring at them, 
after they were dead too. I'm disgusting. His leg has been ripped clean off. She was right. Not cut, but ripped. There were stringy ligaments that had frozen like grim icicles where the leg had been torn off. I... I... Even though it was night on the ground... Um, even though it was night, the ground was still warm from the summer sun. <sighs> Bree... Bree... Are you okay? My vision was blurry. Something kept dripping in my eyes. I tried to brush it away, but it was sticky. It's... Blood. I... I'm bleeding? I tried to stand up, but a shooting pain arced up my leg, and I toppled to the ground again. I... I think it's broken. I reached out, groping. There was something laying there, a green shape in the darkness calling out to me like a beacon. Bree was wearing a green dress. I pulled myself closer. It was definitely the shape of a person in the shadows. It had to be her. If only the blood would stop dripping into my eyes, then I could see her. I reached out towards the shape and my hand brushed against something. Fingers? Bree! I grabbed the hand in front of me, but it was limp. No, no. Maybe if I pull her over, I can see if she's still... I tried to pull her close. There was a wet popping sound and the arm came free of the motionless body in front of me. It slid effortlessly into my arms. No! No! Bree! I curled around the single limb, paralyzed by the impossible realness of it all. No. No. Nick! You look like you're gonna be sick. Grayson put her arm around my shoulder to support me. I leaned on her and tried to control my trembling until I was able to catch my breath. Thanks. I'll be fine. Just give me a second. The legs... It just got to me. Sorry. I can keep it together. I examined the ground. Why don't we check out the ground? Grayson seemed to be more than eager to stop looking at the body. It's actually kind of weird, huh? She pointed to the ground and I immediately saw what she was talking about. The only prints were a circle of animal tracks around the base of the hanging corpse. There was a blood speckled in the snow below, but not nearly enough for a disemboweled man. No footprints. But who hung the body then? And no drag marks either? There was also a blood-stained duvet where the, body, where the body must have been set before it was strung up. Why the hell aren't there any other prints? Maybe it was hung before the snowstorm? I looked up towards the corpse, shuddering. It's time to cut him down then. Yeah, I'm gonna cut him down. It just doesn't seem right, leaving him like that. Yeah, go ahead. We've already seen all this, so we're skipping ahead. Okay, and right here, we're supposed to look at the hands. I bent down to look at his fing at his hands. His fingers were calloused, nails caked with dirt and blood. Some of them were cracked and his thumbnail had been peeled completely backwards. Look, there's something stuck in the blood. She was right. There were thick strands of fur glued to the palms of his hands. Fur? From the bear? But a bear couldn't... A bear couldn't hang someone. This really don't make sense. Look at the torso. There were multiple large animal bites covering his body, but most didn't seem to go in very deep. From the bear? Maybe it was, was, maybe it was wearing clothes when he was bitten. A bunch of people up here have pretty thick jackets because of the weather. My eyes were drawn to the bite mark on his shoulder, which definitely looked like the worst of the injuries. Pieces of his flesh had been torn back, but it still didn't look like it would have killed him. The bite was nothing compared to how mangled the deer was. The sack around his neck was partially covered up by the shoulder wound. Whatever bit him had huge jaws. And it got him before the bag was put around his head. Nick, I think... I don't know if I want to see what's under there. Well, we have no choice but to take off the hood and skip ahead. So instead of showing him the video, we're not supposed to allow him to come into the house a second time, so I'm going to refuse. You really don't need to see it. I wish I hadn't even made it. All you need to know is somebody hung a man. The police can deal with it. I'll show it to them. He looks annoyed. Come on, man. You know you don't really want to see it. This is my father's property. I have every right to see what happened on it. Show me the video, Nick. Maybe later. I really don't want to do it right now. It just makes me sick just thinking about it. 
Fine, fine. Have it your way, then. I relax. I really didn't want to have to relive that awful moment again. If you really want to see if someone had a way of contacting the town, we should go. It's getting dark, and I prefer not to wake my guests. Yeah, hold on. Let me see if Grayson wants to come. And we're going to be skipping ahead. Okay, so something I forgot to do while I was in here was that I was supposed to look at the cabin. The whole cabin was in ruins. Blood arced up the walls, and there were claw bars gouged into everything. I could see an array of pock marks next to the front door. Something glimmered inside one of them. I pick at it. Metal. It's pretty mashed up, but not bloody. I'm glad my mom got stuck down a mountain. The only way this could get worse is if she was here. What kind of bear just comes into a cabin and rips everything up like this? Well, I appreciate your interest in the decor. We have more pressing things to examine. He gestured towards the corpse. Yeah, Felix, I can't imagine why I wouldn't want to look at that right away. Yeah, let's look at the body. We already know how this goes. So, uh, have I looked at the body yet? I've not. Huh, a woman. How can he even tell? It's so badly... Then I saw it. A lump of fat sagging across the torn open chest. The remnants of what must have been a breast. I took a step back, taking a deep, shuddering breath. I dropped the handkerchief he had handed me in my panic. It fluttered to the floor and landed in a congealing pool of blood. Felix watched it fall, then lazily lifted his eyes to my face. Oh, God. I just asked for that, too. That was monogrammed! A gift from my father, and now it's soiled! You should be more careful with my things. He turned back to look more closely at the body. Sorry, my bad. Oh, oh. I choked as the sense of stale excrement overpowered me. Intestines hadn't just been ripped out. Whatever had done it had chewed them up, leaving bits of their contents scattered around the corpse. It took everything I had not to vomit. The stench was so thick this close to the body. It was as if it was coating my tongue. I swore I could taste it. Just like with Tyler, his body smelled like that too. Without even looking back at me, Felix pulled out a tin and offered it up. What? Are those mints? Put one in your mouth. It should help mask the smell enough for you to stop gagging. Wouldn't, wouldn't do to have you vomiting all over the scene. Or on my shoes, for that matter. Man, I am liking Felix even less. I guess it wouldn't hurt. I took a mint out of the offered tin and put it in my mouth. Alright, I already looked at the body. I, okay, I've already looked at the head and the hands. She's here. And let's see, uh, Grayson is telling the truth. All right, we've already seen all this. Something doesn't add up. Something doesn't add up. I don't think it was either of you. At least, not alone. There's just something that doesn't add up. What, pray tell, doesn't add up about my story? Yeah, what the heck's wrong with mine? Look, I need to get some air so I can think. Can we not talk in here with the, uh, you know, uh, yeah, can we just not talk in here? Felix shrugged and Grayson visibly relaxed. It was obvious she was trying not to look over at the mutilated corpse. Well, finally we're outside. After the stale scent of death in the cabin, the outside air was a welcome escape. I could see the faint glow of the moon behind the mountains. Soon, everything could be bathed in its light. I was still holding the gun, running my fingers nervously along the stock. I hope I don't need this. Now, would you care to enlighten us, Nick? What brilliant realization have you come to? I wouldn't say it's brilliant, but Felix, how did you know I'd had an argument with my mom? I heard you on the phone when I came to visit you, Nick. You know that. No, that's not possible, because my mom called just as the storm hit. You didn't come by until later, and if you were outside close enough to hear, then why didn't you see what cut the lines? I stopped by before the storm, but decided not to bother you during your call. I left before anything happened to your line, and I most certainly visited Mr. Booker. Sure, maybe you did, and maybe you cut the power line first. Weird how you thought I might need help so badly that you came to my door again in the middle of the night. Felix, what you go cutting the phone line for? You know what? All the mother lines was cut too. My house phone didn't work at neither when I tried calling my daddy in town in the morning. You do that, Felix? Don't be daft. How could I? 
I don't think you were very surprised to learn that Mr. Nash was murdered either. I... I saw Grayson when she found that body. I believe her. She didn't know it was her dad until... Until that hood came off. I thought you said I didn't do this. Yet all I've heard are accusations. There is something else. Grayson, I think you killed your mother. What? What? Nick? I... I held up my hand to stop her protest. It's gonna sound crazy, but... Grayson? I... I think you're a werewolf. Nick, what are you saying crazy stuff like that to me? That doesn't make sense. So you've suspected too. Huh. I turned and glared at Felix. I don't think you suspected anything, Felix. I think you knew already. No werewolf would hang that body up. He was bitten, but none of those bites looked fatal. I think Grayson's dad was still alive when you found him. He told you what attacked him. Then you killed him. I can't be a werewolf, Nick. That's crazy talk. Listen, Grayson, you told me you sleepwalk, right? Does it happen at night when the moon is full like it was last night? I don't know about a full moon, but of course it's night. Actually, Nick, I don't remember the last time I seen a full moon. I nodded. Well, if we turn last night, then we won't have to worry for another month, right? It's only one night you sleepwalk. She looked alarmed. No, Nick, it, it's... Three. My heart jumped into my throat. I looked at the sky. The moon had not yet crested the mountains. And last night was... Grayson's voice shrank down to a whisper. Last night, it was the first. The girl is right. It's usually three nights. The night before, the night off, and the night after the full moon. So you didn't know. Felix sniffed and stared me dead in the eyes. A look of deep offense on his face. I know a great many things. For example, I know that Mr. and Mrs. Nash lied to me about their daughter when they accepted this job. You see, I did find out Grayson was a werewolf, but I did not discover that fact until last night after she transformed. Mr. Nash. So he was alive when you met him? He was. Until I found out he was a liar tainted by a werewolf's bite. And after that, I may have become a bit upset. And you killed him?! You hung him! Yes, I did. I may have also, uh, removed his legs. I need a bait and I had to work with the tools available. A fitting end for him, given the problems he caused me. I do apologize for involving you in that drama, Nick. It wasn't my intention. I should have encouraged you to stay in the cabin today. This was my mess to clean up, not yours. Why would you? Why wouldn't I? You were wandering around my property looking for someone to eat. Your father told your mother you'd gone out and she, did, and she did the most sensible thing a parent could. She came up here to try to put you out of your misery. A pity she failed, even after I lured you all the way to her with your father's legs as bait. Can't even imagine how she felt, having her own daughter rip her to pieces like that. She made a pretty good attempt at killing you. Missed, unfortunately for her. Maybe a heart got in the way after all. It caused a nice bit of damage to my cabin wall, though. And you just absolutely ruined the floors when you ripped her up. A look of intense anger crossed his face. I still can't believe they had the gall to build an iron cage in the basement of my old family home. I offered them a place to stay, and they had the audacity to rip it apart. Also, they could keep their daughter as a pet. I think it was the confession that made me lose my temper, lie to me, endanger my guests, drill holes into the walls of my family history. Example had to be made. He deserved nothing but humiliation for the disrespect he showed me. Nobody deserves- Nobody deserves to die like that, Felix! Nobody! My mom tried to- And- Cage? In the basement? I don't remember no cage, but then- he didn't never want to be going down there. You finally see it, don't you? This whole thing is your fault. G Grayson. You... You ripped his clothes off after... You're a monster! Felix grinned. His eyes narrowed to wicked slits. I know. So are you, Miss Nash. 
based on what's rattling inside that traumatized little skull of his. We're all monsters here. You're just the most pathetic one. A werewolf in denial. They're all monsters? Is he just a killer or is he... Felix, what are you? You aren't human either, are you? No. No, I'm not. I'm what you might call a vampire. It's the morning. I saw you in the morning. He winced and almost looked embarrassed. It was overcast. Nothing bright enough to kill me. I have to admit, though, something about you has made me reckless. I wanted to see you again. Enough to risk a bit of a burn. Me? Why? I'm not... Special? I think you are, Grace. Grayson sees it too. I'm not the only one who has been following you around. Now, if you want to get out of here alive, I suggest staying close. The girl here is about to turn. What? He turned to face Grayson, locking eyes with her. He begged me for help, you know. He was still alive, wanted me to finish you off, said it was the only way to save you. Your mother thought so too. That's why she brought that gun. Grayson! You didn't kill your dad and he lured you to your mom. It, it isn't your fault. Maybe you are about to change, but I, I think you can control it. Oh, I don't know about all that. She most certainly did an excellent job tearing her mother to pieces. And the father, it was most certainly already a dead man who didn't quite finish with the dying part yet when I found him. The best case scenario for him was being cursed for the rest of his miserable life. So much for control. I did a mercy kill, and you know all about this sort of thing, don't you, Nick? I could hear Tyler moaning, something closer to an inhuman gurgle than actual words. Bree's arm touched my face as I lay curled around a torn limb. I didn't mean for anything to happen, but you, you did this on purpose. Well, well, looks like we have two monsters in denial. I'm disappointed in you, Nick. I thought at least you were. Strangely, he did actually look confused, as if he had expected me to agree with him. Why the hell would I side with you? It's a shame. I thought that maybe. But never mind. If you want to get over yourself, if you want to go get yourself killed by siding with this mindless beast, your choice. If you change your mind want to see the truth, I may still save you, if you ask nicely. The only one not worth keeping around is you. She snarled at Felix, fists clenched at her sides. And if I'm a monster, like you say, then I'll be going down with you. You do right by me, Nick, you hear? If I turn into that, that thing like you all are saying, you best be finishing me off. Grayson, you don't need to. Don't you break my resolve now. I'm done with deciding. He gotta be stopped and I'm the gal to do it. She lunged, taking a swipe at Felix. The clouds parted and she froze, every muscle in her body locking up. The moon hung full and luminous overhead. She looked over at me. There was a mixture of fear and determination on her face. So it's true. I can feel it, Nick. Mom's gun. I'll get him, but you do right by me, you hear? You... Ooh! Hey, I'm gonna into do this. Her back arched forward and started bulging out, arms twisting and ripping through her clothes, her flesh tearing and repairing as it tried to keep up with the transformation of the muscle, sinew and bone underneath. Felix tensed up, body elongated, bat-like ears sprouting from his head, claws extending from his fingers. You could try to kill me, you little mongrel, but you'll see I'm so much more than you'll ever be. I have control. But Grayson was past the point of caring about his insults. Her body was growing larger with every passing moment. There was ripping and tearing as her clothes no longer fit her. I scrambled back, still clutching the gun. Two shells. I had two shells. She wants me to shoot her. I know if I... A monstrous beast stood where Grayson had been just seconds before. The beast howled, deep and guttural and full of rage. Without even a glance back in my direction, she charged towards Felix. Felix moved like liquid to avoid her, slipping by the powerful swings of her claws and raking his own talons down her back. A flap of fur peeled back, 
exposing flexing muscle and the white bone of the werewolf's shoulder blades, within a moment began to knit back together again. Felix slid to stop and look back. I saw his glowing eyes widen in shock and a repairing injury. Damn you! I can deal with this! I just have to be quicker! He flew to the left and right, dodging each slow, vengeful swing from the werewolf. He used his razor talon like needles, uh, pokey and piercing when he couldn't find a wide enough opening to fully slice. The snow was turning into red froth under Grayson's feet as it became saturated with her blood. One of her swipes tore across his front and dark blood oozed from the wound. He hissed like a feral cat. You see, you are nothing, you nasty little mutt! He went in for a final blow that looked like it would take her head clean off. I turned away, afraid to see him succeed. Crunch. Jaws. Then Grayson, she... I looked back and Felix's head was clutching her mouth. Felix had taken a chunk out of the side of her neck, but had not severed her head. He went all in and lost. There was creaking and splintering sound, like wood being compressed. Is that... His skull being crushed. He tried to kick himself free, rending scratches all across the werewolf's face, but nothing would stop her. He locked eyes with me. He's afraid. He's really afraid. In that moment, he looked like how I had felt the night of the accident. I had a sudden crazy urge to go to him. I wanted to tell him that it would all be okay, even though I knew it was a lie. Nick, I wish... I wish we could have... But what he wished for, I never knew. In that moment, his head burst outward in a spray of black ichor that spattered the snow and surrounding trees. His headless body thumbed to the ground, twitching fingers clawing at the snow. It was as if he were reaching out towards me. The werewolf stumbled and fell to the ground, whining and panting. The wounds were knitting back together before my eyes. The gun! This is my chance! If I don't do it now... I... Oh. <sighs> I know if I don't shoot her, it's gonna lead to a bad ending. Fire. I took careful aim and walked up behind her. I could see the palsy of her heart under an exposed rib. The surrounding muscle was already knitting back together. A final gift from Felix. I pulled the trigger. A mournful whimper cut the air. And it made my heart break. Grayson, I'm sorry. I had to! The silver buckshot hissed and sizzled, refusing to heal, embedding deep within her beating heart. I turned away, unable to watch my friend die by my own hands. I've killed every friend I've ever had. Tyler, Bree, now Grayson. Nick, you did right by me. It's like you promised. I turned around and she was there, small and trembling in the snow. The magic that had transformed her was still struggling to repair the damage I had done. She took a jerking, shuddering breath. I pulled my jacket off and draped it over the gaping hole in her chest. Yeah, I did, Grayson. But what if I could have? I never wanted to hurt nobody, but I did. You did right. I know what you go thinking, you then. Felix deserved what he got. They ain't wrong about getting rid of me. Should have had a bullet in my head the minute I got bit. Grayson, no. I, I know we just met, but I'm glad, okay? I'm glad I met you. It's my fault you're like. Shh. I know you like feeling bad for yourself, but... I don't want to talk about that. Yes. Lasting. Whatever you want. I'll talk about whatever you want. Okay. What do you think my favorite big city thing would have been? I looked at her for a moment and thought. Hiking, maybe? She gave a low, rattling laugh. Ah, oh, come on. I've been hiking my whole damn life. This ain't a big city thing. Shit. Sorry, it was kind of dumb, huh? It took me a moment to realize I was smiling. How could she make me smile? 
at a time like this. I want something you can only do in the city. For her, she's loud, like adventures, also likes being around as many people as possible. Well, probably an amusement park, one of the ones with the big coasters. I'm not a fan, but I bet you'd love that. Would I go with you and your friends? Yeah, I think Bree and Tyler. You would have been a great part of the crew. Maybe we all could have gotten to the same college and I would have asked Bree out. Yeah, and we stay all, we'd all stay up all night studying. And we'd all go out and take our food and stuff. Maybe I'd buy for everyone. I'm partying on the weekends, going to but some places, the flashy lights and the dancing, a club. Yeah, I'd find me some boy or gal or something, or maybe you'd. Nah, you have your other friend, right? Bree, you said. Well, I don't know if it was ever going to work out. I never asked. I would have totally got out on a date with you if I was single. I mean, if you wanted to. And I'd totally be your wingman if I weren't. I've never been to a club. Bad going with you guys would have been fun. Grayson smiled. Yeah, it sounds nice. Nick, I, I, I can't feel nothing no more. I think it's soon. Listen, that stuff, just because your friends ain't around for it, you still need to do it. Gotta keep going. I, I couldn't just leave everyone behind. I didn't say nothing like that. I want you thinking of us. Having the best damn time. I... I can't. Her lips had gone blue. And she started shaking. Promise. Okay, I promise. I promise. Just... Just... Why does it always have to be this way? Why couldn't I be the one to go this time? But she didn't answer me. Instead... She lay there, silent and cold. The final magic holding her together, dispelled as the loss of her, as the loss of her life ebbed away. The walk back to the cabin felt as if it took no time at all, and also an eternity. Inside, everything was calm. I turned on the lights, packed up all my things, then lit a fire in the fireplace before sitting on the couch. I did it all slowly, trying to avoid the inevitable time where there was nothing else to do. The moment I sat down, the faces started to creep into the back of my head. Bree motionless beneath the car, hand limp and open as I tried to grab her. Tyler groaning into the night, his face a caricature of what it had been in life. Felix reaching out to me, and the wish he had that I would never know. Grayson, bloody and smiling, even as she slipped away. And a promise. The promise that was the last thing she she ever heard. I should have saved her. I should have saved all of them. Why can't I just go and join them? Why can't I just leave too? No. Keep it together. I have to try. I have to. Anyway, I'm sure. I'm sure she'll be able to meet them. I think maybe it would be like... Hey man, it's been a while. You have a good trip? Aw, oh, you didn't invite me. I want to go on a winter cabin getaway. <laughs> it was just too embarrassed to ask. See? Look, he's blushing. Seriously though, man. We could have had a party. You met anyone else cool up there? You know we couldn't have had a party. Mom rented a cabin. Yeah, but she lets us hang out. It would have been fine. Gotta work hard to play hard, yeah? And I'm in some serious need of some play hard. The last volleyball match really took a lot out of me. The college team is a lot tougher than high school was. Ah, oh, Bree. He's not someone... He's not saying who he met. That it was a girl. You have competition. Oh, no. I hope not. Then I guess I'd have to date you, Tyler. A mere linebacker to Nick's quarterback. What a downgrade. <laughs> Only teasing. We're dating? 
Uh, yeah, you asked me out at a graduation party four months ago. Though I gotta say, you're losing some boyfriend points for not inviting me along to your cabin adventure. You didn't meet a girl then? Think she'd hit it off with Tyler? Ah, uh, yeah, I didn't. Maybe? Let me introduce you guys. Guys, this is Grayson. Hey, y'all, nice to meet ya. Oh my god. Nick, I lied. Taylor, you wouldn't stand a chance in hell. Nick, I'm dumping you, and she's gonna be my girlfriend now. So, awesome. Look at those cute little shorts. <laughs> You're too much. I'm thinking I like all this hanging out. Nick was saying something about a beach, or maybe one of them amusement parks. Something about Kosas? Oh, yeah. Amusement parks. We could do that. It's been forever since I've been on one of those crazy big rides. Nick never wants to go. <laughs> I'll go. I'll go. Oh, wow. He must like you, Grayson. He hates roller coasters. He probably suggested the beach, right? He always likes going to the beach. Nick is right. The beach is far superior in every way to an amusement park. A night bonfire on the beach. I think that would be ideal. Whoa, where did this guy come from? You met more than just Grayson up there, Nick? Yeah, I did. This is Felix. He's kind of uptight, but he's okay. What Nick means to say is that I don't care for the frivolity of these roller coasters. Talking by a fire is better. If that makes me uptight, then guilty as charged. Nick, I think you met someone who is more of a stick in the mud than you are. I'm not a... I'm not a stick in the mud, thank you. I know, Felix. You know, there's more to live in than working. Someone has to make sure the cabins are running properly. That's supposed to be my dad's job, you know. Take a break. You own the cabins, Felix? Maybe we really can have the party up there sometime. Very well. I think I can make accommodations. But that's not what we're doing today. So which is it? The beach or the amusement park? Hell yeah! Winter vacation, here we come! But for today, we're doing the amusement park. Nick's paying too. What? There's no way I'm paying for all of you. I want to go to the beach. You're paying for me too. This is the best day ever. New friends and a free day at the park. You're too much. Look, maybe I'll get food, but I'm not buying the tickets. Well, Nick, I think we're outvoted. But you know, that's not always a bad thing. Yeah, all right, Felix. I guess not. Let's go. Yeah. Like that. Even him. I think he would have been like that if he wasn't a vampire. We all could have been... Friends. I heard the sound of tires on the snow. A moment later, my mom walked in, shivering from the cold. Finally back! Who knew that a few hour outing would end up being over a day? The phone's going out. I think I spent the whole time having a heart attack. Hey, mom. She rushed over to me. Are you okay? Did you have any nightmares? I left you alone for so long. Yeah, I... I'm fine, you know. I've been thinking, Mom. I couldn't have saved them, and I... I wish... I wish it was different, but... It's not. She wrapped her arms around me. Oh, Nick. You don't have to think about that if you don't want to. No, it's important. What I'm trying to say is... I... I didn't die. I'm still here. And I owe it to them to keep on living, right? Not just thinking about the last time I saw them. Not just daydreaming about how they died. I want to think about who they would have been. And I want to live the life we all could have had together. For them. I breathed in deeply. This next part felt like ash in my mouth. But I had to say it. And for myself. You're amazing for even trying, baby. You're amazing. I laughed. I could see the full moon hanging bright and heavy in the sky through the window. I'm not amazing, Mom. I'm just the one who's still alive, but... I'm going to try. I'm going to try to dream about their futures. If I hadn't made it that night, if they had, I would have wanted them to dream about mine. The end. 
Anyway, that was up all night. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys do want to play this for yourselves, the link to the game will be in the description below. And once again, this game is part of this year's Queer Halloween Stories bundle. So if you do want to get this game alongside, like I said plenty of times before, over 100 amazing games, books, and audio dramas. Hey, link to that is in the description as well, right after the link to the game. This game is absolutely beautiful. I feel like it handled the themes of uh, trauma and loss like incredibly well. And like seeing the nuances in the characters, and it's it's not really black and white here. There's a lot of gray area to both Grayson and Felix. And I absolutely love that for the writing of this game. But anyway, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you all have a lovely rest of the day. And as always, I'll be seeing you in the next video. This is Lion, signing off. Ciao.